okay students in previous class uh, we studied about topic cosets the cosets is not directly related to your syllabus so we done it because we using this concept in our today's topic another topic uh, lagrange's theorem lagrange's theorem uh, it says that if z is a finite group finite group and a is be any any subgroup of the group z then uh, order of s and we denoted this as order of s order of s should divide order of the z that means order of a subgroup uh, subgroup will divide the order of the whole group or you can say that uh, order of group is divisible by the order of subgroup order means order of a group means number of elements of the group that means order of z means uh, number of elements in the group and this notation in some cases is defined as denoted as order mod of z that means order of z so let's just start proof of this theorem so let z be a group of order n let z be a group of order n and a is b any subgroup of z of uh, of order order m c m and n are nothing but integers so clearly clearly m less than n yes since uh, a is a subgroup so number of the element of a cannot be greater than the number of the element in the group c so m less than n so we have to prove that uh, we have to prove we have to proof uh, order of a should divide order of z that is m divides n okay so since uh, order of a is equal to m that means a has m elements so this elements i named as a1 h2 up to a sn a1 is to up to is that is a1 s2 cannot be equal or is to s3 is 5 cannot be equal because if it's equal is one equal to is2 then there will be single element is1 equal to is2 but uh, in that case is has less than m elements so is1 is2 cannot be equal that is uh, is i not equal to hj for all i comma j equal to 1 to up to m okay from this i think this is uh, it is clear so take a be any element of c but a as to z be any that a may, may be lies to the z a nothing but some uh, nothing but uh, some of a size but this is not our subject in this contact so a belongs to z be any element since a is any element z is any group so consider a uh, left coset a is so i take this a is 
nothing but this in case uh, it's Ziggy say groove under the operation addition then you can take uh, you can take a plus s this is equivalent so I take this a plus s and a plus s will be in the case of addition we add this in the case of multiplication we must have to multiply a to the uh, left side of these elements so a is equal to a s1 a s2 a s m uh, so clearly a h has m distinct elements so first we show that uh, first we show show a h has exactly m distinct element distinct elements so we will show this by contradiction method that is uh, we take that uh, it has not m element uh, so sorry sorry uh, we take this by contradiction method uh, if possible i mean we let it has uh, a h has not n distinct elements if possible we take that a is has not m elements m element clearly it is distinct m elements in this case sum of a is i is equal to another a is something i j j so i take this as i j elements that means a 1 2 3 up to m this is m distinct if it is not it has not m distinct elements because one will be equal to some any other elements take these elements as a i equal to a is since uh, a is i and a is j lies in the groove also because groove is always closed under the operation so this will also belongs to is and similarly in subgroup cancellation law holds if we multiply a inverse by both side then we will get uh, this will be e a s i because a inverse always identity identity is denoted as e e a s a if we multiply this this will be a s i equal to a s a if we got this that means for some is i equal to a s a that means a s has a s has less than m elements but which is not possible we have already taken that is a s uh, has m distinct elements which is not possible since uh, si equal to hj this will be become h has less than m elements so this is a contradiction this is a contradiction so so uh, coset ah has exactly m elements A is has e x a c t l exactly m elements and in previous class we have said that if a group has uh, n distinct cosets then the group is equal to union of all cosets and I use this uh, result here that is uh, since uh, z is finite so z can equal to the all cosets distinct cosets so we don't know how many number of distinct cosets h has so take arbitrary a number so a1h union a2 h dot 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 
union ek how many numbers that means k numbers of cosets has this does not matter how many numbers of cosets has okay since all are distinct that means a i s intersection a z h equal to phi we have oh yeah we have uh, already we have cosets are either identically distinct or identically equivalent or distinct so for i not equal to z fine here i not equal to z obviously 1 to 3 up to k k is any number so this is not equal to so this are distinct so order of z so since these are distinct this has elements distinct order this all are distinct order so this will be equal to since since they are distinct so order will be addition of this since it has two elements it has three elements it has five elements if it has two three five elements then union two elements will include another three elements this will include five elements so uh, or order will be in addition form so order of a one h plus uh, order of a two h dot dot plus order of a k h. Since uh, we have already proved that uh, coset has also uh, exactly m ordered means coset has m elements so order of a is equal to m plus m plus m so here how many times m appears m appears up to k times so 1 2 3 up to k times k times so if we sum this this will get k into m and order of z order of z is nothing but n so n equal to k into m so uh, n is multiple of m this means uh, m is multiple of uh, sorry n is multiple of m this means m divides m. for example you can see that uh, 15 equal to 3 into 5 then uh, 5 divide 15 so this is equivalent multiple of m n equal to multiple of m so n m divides n so here m is order of h and n is order of g as we have already uh, taken order g be a group of order n order of g equal to n and h be a group of order m so this So we have taken A is any arbitrary subgroup and Z is any group. So order of S should divide order of Z. And this proves our theorem. So main result is uh, not is the converse of this theorem is true. So we will discuss in our next class.